G-Day YouTube. Okay, you're finally starting to understand all this story about exposure, ISO, shutter speed and aperture. Because you've seen all my previous videos that explain to you how to step up your photo game from zero to hero. Of course you saw them. You even love them. It's awesome to understand all this, but once the camera is in your hand, what should you really do? Come on, today we stop the theory. It's time to put it into practice. In this video, I teach you what the mods on your camera are and how to use them. Ah, Melbourne. Yes, they may have the best coffee in the world here, as they like to think. But it's above all an incredible city full of great photo spots. Today I propose that we go out for a little while to test our camera in practice. But first, a little bit of theory. On your camera main dial, you have several modes corresponding to the setting and the degree of autonomy you will leave to your camera to manage the image exposure. Let's start with the different scene mode and the full automatic mode. Basically, you have nothing to do but point with the viewfinder on what you want and press the button, and bim, you have an image. The camera will calculate for you the settings necessary to have a correct exposure. These modes correspond to the type of scene photographed. If you choose portrait, for example, by choosing for you each value of the exposure triangle, your camera will favor a large aperture to try to have a shallow depth of field, and it will adjust the speed and ISO accordingly. So I'm not going to play the extremist photographer who's going to tell you that there is only the manual mode in life, because it's completely stupid. On the other hand, if you want to progress in photography one day, you must absolutely avoid all its automatic modes, because it's stupid. Yes, you can leave the camera in charge for some settings, but it's up to you to tell it what kind of image you want to get. And for that, the first mode you can use is the P mode. P stands for program, it's an underused mode that few people really understand. Basically, yes, it's a fully automatic mode, but it's a smart one. One, you can choose by yourself the ISO sensitivity. Two, on entry-level cameras, you are able to authorize or not the activation of this bullshit built-in flash horror thing. Seriously, who used that shit? It's poop. Here we are, photographer mode activated. Let's have fun with all this. Maybe we should try first to find some quieter place. Let's switch to P mode and try to shoot these flowers. The camera automatically offered me an aperture speed couple to correctly expose my image. If my sensitivity is not configured in auto, I still have the option to change the ISO. But where it's interesting is that I can customize the value proposed by the camera. For example, if I want to increase the depth of field, I will turn the dial until I have a large aperture. All these pairs of value are equivalent in terms of exposure, but I can decide to play on the perception of movement, modifying the shutter speed, and the depth of field, modifying the aperture. If you're just a beginner, this is really the ideal mode to start choosing what you want to do with your image without getting too lost in the settings. Okay, once again, when you determine the exposure of an image, you will also affect the depth of field with the aperture and the perception of movement in the image through the shutter speed. Through. The next two modes I'm going to introduce you to are the ones you're gonna use the most because they are going to allow you to play on both of these elements. The shutter speed priority mode is called EST for most brands except for Canon, which call it TV, which means time valuation, probably because they wanted to stand out or something. Three, two, one. 
In this mode, you will choose the shutter speed by yourself and the camera will take care of choosing the appropriate aperture to correctly expose the image. If the high ISO sensitivity is set to automatic, the camera will also do it. So you just focus on the proper shutter speed to use to get the desired effect on your image. You want to freeze the action? Just choose a fast shutter speed and your camera will look for the necessary light in the ISO and aperture. Use a longer exposure time to get a feeling of movement and the camera will close the iris to block the overflow of light and reduce the sensitivity. A for aperture. AV at Canon for aperture valuation, which is a lot more cooler, yeah, I guess? Well, it's the same thing, except it's the other way around. Now you play with the aperture, so the goal here is to work on the depth of field you want. Personally, it's my favorite mode since I do a lot of portraits and I really like to shoot wide open. By setting a very wide aperture, yes, I will have a nice depth of field, but I will let a lot of light in. So I will have to compensate by setting a minimum ISO, but also by setting a very fast shutter speed. Well, don't worry, in A mode, your camera will do it for you. As a reminder, you also have the possibility to leave the ISO in automatic mode to only worry about the aperture value. But then, in the end, you only need these two modes. In 90% of cases, yeah. But you're going to realize that sometimes it won't be enough. Why? Simply because your camera tries to make an average measure and try to get an almost correct exposure in the entire image. But in fact, it's not necessarily what you want, or sometimes it's not just possible. It will make a mistake, so you will have to correct yourself, either the speed or the ISO or the aperture. You can also have an artistic intention that is totally different from what the camera will offer to you. For example, having more contrast or burning or dodging part of the image on purpose. Well, that's what the manual mode offers. You're going to take full control of your camera and you will be the one to set the ISO, aperture and shutter speed. You will have to choose each value of the exposure triangle. So yes, well, you're just a beginner. You're going to have to do a lot of testing and to be honest, even when you're pro. The trick is, as with automatic mods, you should always have as a starting point what you want to do. Let's say you're drawing a portrait. You want to have full control of the depth of field, so you should already know what kind of aperture to choose. Yeah, you want this beautifully blurred background. Let's go crazy and choose to shoot wide open. So now you know that it's from this value that you will have to adjust your speed, trying to be fast enough to avoid motion blur. Do you remember the rule I gave you? At least, the shutter speed should be equal to the focal length. Let's say you shoot at 50mm, try to be at least at 150 for a second. If you have the possibility, a little more, even double it, 1100. Depending on the light you have, all you have to do now is adjust the ISO more or less to get the perfect exposure. Okay, let's summarize everything we've seen today. First, forget all the automatic modes. The only one you can use is the program mode. If you are just starting out, this mod will be able to help you by offering you several different shutter speed opening couple that you will be able to adjust according to what you want to do. Once you are more comfortable, you will either choose aperture or shutter speed, A mode or S mode, depending on whether you want to play on the depth of field or whether you want to play on the motion blur of your image. And only in special cases where you will need to really take care of all the components of your camera, in that case only, you should switch to manual mode. Okay, if you like this video, you can show me some love by letting a little comment and a like. And if you don't want to miss the next videos, subscribe and ring this pretty little bell. See you mate, keep on creating.